Hey, E, got a sec? Sure thing, Kathy. What's up? What do you think of Lily Meyer's art? I actually looked her up this morning, and I couldn't find any records of her being recognized as an artist. Yeah, I doubt there was ever a chance for that to happen. Wade bought everything shortly after she died. I only got a chance to see this one picture. It wasn't all that bad, but nothing breathtaking. Well, maybe there's more to her art than meets the eye. Something Wade knew, and we're missing. Yeah, maybe. I should get back to the investigation. Okie dokie. All right, I'm off. Peace out, E. Okie dokie. Good luck and see you later. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. We meet again, Mr. Homeless Guy. Homeless? That's the worst thing I ever heard of, and totally untrue. So, what's up with the trash can? Digging for treasure? Well, uh, I'm just going through a rough patch. By the way, you owe me ten bucks. Nah, you agreed to seven. You're busting my balls here. Better get those balls checked out in this clinic, then. So cold. Like a stake through the heart. Hmm. <laughs> what do they call you, anyway? Gober. Everyone calls me Gober. All right. I'm Kathy. Pleasure to meet you. So, what's your story, anyway? My story? Yeah. Don't all bums have a story? For your information, this is all just a dry streak in my showbiz career. Is that so? I don't recognize you at all. I used to have more hair. That, I actually believe. Come on, man. Frankie Gold is my stage name. Surely you must have heard of me. Not really, no. Oh, come on. I have starred in dozens of Hollywood movies. The Silence of the Lambert? Jacob's Bladder? The Usual Surprises? Natural Bald Killers? Not ringing any bells. Kids these days, no appreciation for quality cinema. Breaks my heart. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? Tell me about The Silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love means no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story, I'm not sure I want to know what Jacob's Bladder is about, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder, the tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. Give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during a surprise birthday party of 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark comedy. Natural bald killers? It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephyr, turns bald in high school. One day, 
He has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying, and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. And he makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia, and he dies on the operating table. Oh, never mind. Not the cultured type. I understand. Okay, I'm off. Bye! Excuse me, nurse? Hey, nurse! <sighs> yeah? Try not to strain yourself. Whatever. What do you want? I'm here to see Charles Wade. Never heard of him. Anything else? Bullshit. I know he's here. Listen, it's okay. I'm a friend of the family. No, you're not, and I said he's not here. Don't make me call security. What a bitch. I need to get rid of her somehow. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! So, how good an actor are you? The best! The very best! You know, that nurse in there, she said she loved you in all those movies, and that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it. She always gave me these strange looks. I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be crapping up from shyness. Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see you act, I'm sure. I'm gonna have to oblige. Which movie do you think she'd like the best? How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why? Uh, what's this smell? Bacon? Oh, no, my thanks. My head Women's hurts. magazines make I'm my brain seizing. melt. Thank you, thank you. You've been a great audience. That wasn't really an electrifying performance. I don't want to. I don't want to. Hey, do oh. hey. Sure. How about this? I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why? Uh, what's this smell? Bacon? Oh, badly, my head hurts. <laughs> Nurse, he's seizing. Oh, shit! Man, I feel like a total jackass. I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later.
It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. Ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <sighs> I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. Now I remember. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> oh, just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? Are you implying that there's more to know? Mrs. Rain accepted the health care, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together. Married our high school sweethearts together. Went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice. But he came up ahead, no doubt. So, when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? The truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just... Too good, bless him. He should have been harder on Brian. More strict. I wouldn't mind teaching my old man some manners myself, wherever he is. Yes, of course. You must understand this better than anyone. People like your father simply cannot grasp how far their bad influence spreads. So our family started drifting apart. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship, for obvious reasons. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, 
I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. Do you recognize the call sign, Cocky? Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess. Since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early 83. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles and started hurting himself, trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, gone. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes. Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later. But they didn't have much luck. We found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family dog. Some stunning police work right there. Indeed. There was a single witness, though who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other, given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything you need. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious, what's your interest in the paintings? I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them, right before he had his injury. Is that so? Strange. What can you tell me about the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like any other church to me. Weddings, baptisms, and funerals are just about what I can muster. What do you see in this picture, Charles? Fireflies would be my best guess. Do you know what this is? A flower. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. It's a photocopy of a book page with information about the red scythe flower. Here's an interesting segment. Another interesting trait of the red scythe is the smell, which is familiar to that of a pepper. The pollen of the plant has also been known to cause hallucinations in concentrated amounts. Native American tribes harvested and smoked the plant for that reason, but the flower never caught on as a modern recreational drug due to the difficulty of growing it.
Well, this is it. This is where the picture was taken. I'm not sure what I expected to find here. I need to clear my head. What the? We've met before, haven't we? Nope, just no. I'd remember a creepy bald dude with makeup. Memories can deceive, Kathy. Dig deeper. Who are you? How do you know my name? You told me, remember? I feel strange. Am I dreaming? It's the mending I will try to facilitate. You're not real. I'm lying asleep in my bed right now. Focus, Kathy. Listen to the drowned girl. You mean Lily? What about her? She's the anomaly, the missing refrain, the convergence point of things past and events yet to happen. Dial down the metaphors a notch, would you, Mr. Kafka? I get enough of that shit in English class. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disappoint. I'm glad, given how much trouble I went through to be here. You see, my name was taken from me, so I claimed a color in its stead. The next time we meet, you'll know the exact hue of red. You're on the right path, Kathy. Follow your grandfather, and everything will work out in the end. Wait, what? How did I get here? Am I going crazy? Am I turning into mom? Hello? Creepy bald guy. Guess no one's home. What's this? A bald man dressed in red. Oh, creepy. It's endangered. I'm not going to take it without a really good reason. It's you again. Come on in. No Nathan today? Nah, haven't seen Nate all day. Probably out in the woods. Looks like Nathan knows the strange red man. I need to talk to him about this. I had a, a few more questions, Sue. She. Did you know that somebody stole Lily's paintings from Wade? Huh? I, I knew he got robbed a few years back, but I, I thought he still had them all. Do you know who the Red Man is? Oh, that's just Nate's imaginary friend. I see. So there's no actual person in town he could be referring to? <laughs> no way! According to Nathan, the Red Man hasn't changed in 30 years. 
Sounds like he has quite an active imagination then. Oh, you have no idea. He has unique names for each of the kitchen utensils. Nerf Sid. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Do you know anything about the art theft in the Wade estate? Um, yes. Mr. Wade phoned ahead about that. Lenny! Yes, boss? Get the report from the burglary in the Wade estate back in 86? On it, boss. There you go, Kathy. Thanks, buddy. I gotta find this gold farb guy. Maybe he knows more about the burglary. I don't have anything else. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Grandma. I just thought I'd drop by. Sure, hon. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I don't see a reason. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? I believe he teaches at the flight school these days. I don't think so, at least not anymore. I was told he was placed in a mental facility. Really? He always struck me as a kind man. Maybe a bit nervous and on edge, but not crazy. There's more. I found out that Jimmy asked Grandpa for help not long before Grandpa ended up in that wheelchair. Jimmy sounded really desperate, I'm sure. You should go find the man then. Surely he must know something. That's the plan. I just wondered if there's anything else you think I should know about him. Not really. We haven't stayed in touch since Joseph was injured. I know that he had a wife, Agatha, and a son, James. Agatha passed away from cancer years ago, but as far as I know, James still lives in the city with his family. Okay, thanks, Grandma. Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Oh, that poor man. He used to be an upstanding citizen, you know. Now he's constantly drinking and keeps babbling on about that imaginary acting career of his. Sad thing. Do you know where I can find him? He's homeless, dear. Lost his job a few years ago and never really got back on his feet. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Thanks, Grandma. Looks... Well, gotta go, Graham. Spy cat.
I need a word, Miss Mendez. Wait, how do you know my name? It's written on that board behind you, genius. You have the eyesight of a bald eagle or something? Eh, what can I say? I'm a freak of nature. What happened to Goober, anyway? Who? The guy who had the seizure. Oh, he ran off somewhere. Kept babbling about a religious near-death experience. Okay, thanks. Hello, Father. Greetings, my child. I'm glad you decided to come here. Yeah, but just so you know, I'm not here to join your church or anything. Oh, I would never assume that. Good. So, with that out of the way, I have some questions. Anything you need. I'm Isaac Price. Kathy. Kathy Rain, but I'm guessing you figured that out already. I did. Rumors spread quickly around here. So, how can I be of service? This may sound strange, but have you heard of or seen a strange man dressed in red? Only our Lord and Savior Jesus. Surely his rags were drenched in blood as he lay upon the cross. That's not what I meant. Are you joking? I haven't seen a person like that, no. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? I don't recognize that name, no. Does the name Lily Myers mean anything to you? It does. I was a substitute teacher in her high school for some time before I was ordained. Really? Did you know her personally? We weren't close. I only knew her as much as a teacher would know any- All right, so how did she seem toward the end? For one, she started skipping school a lot. And when she did show up, she was absent-minded and moody. She always looked depressed and hunched down like she had a whole world on her shoulders. Any idea of what caused this change? Not a clue. All I know is that when she returned from that last summer break, she was a whole different person. Do you know who Franklin Goldfarb is? I'm afraid not, my child. Care to tell me the history of the church? I'd be happy to. The story is a fascinating one. This church was founded by my father, William T. Price, in the 70s. Back then, he made his living as a traveling salesman and was driving through this area, as he'd done so many times before. However, this day was different. My father held dark thoughts in his mind. He was angry, thinking of evil deeds, even considering swerving off the road into a rock and ending it all. Then suddenly, divine intervention. Three bright lights appeared. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the sign of God. This epiphany was the moment my father had been waiting for. He sold all of his belongings and took me and my brother to live with him here in Conwell Springs. Soon thereafter, he built this church and started gathering followers. I take it that window up there resembles what he saw when he had this epiphany? Indeed. The stained glass window depicts the Holy Trinity as witnessed by my father. Do you know exactly when or where this event took place? Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. It's a captivating story. Well, it was in the spring of 1971. My father never told anyone where. Okay, so what happened then? People flocked to Father Bill. The church flourished and continued to grow all the way up until his sudden death in 1983. That's when I stepped in to take leadership of the church. I take it that the church started declining after the death of Father Bill? Uh, yes, naturally so. With such a magnetic personality, he was irreplaceable. But I assure you the church is still very much thriving. Looks kind of empty to me. It's not really our peak hours. What's up with you handing out pamphlets at funerals, then? I'm going to assume you meant no disrespect. I could, but I'll keep it to myself for now. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? It was the work of the devil, I'll say that much. Joseph was a kind man. He did not deserve such a fate. You heard my speech at the funeral, Kathy. I meant every word. He was a great man who did much good for this community. Did you know him personally? In a way. 
He and my father did charity work together. Joseph was around a lot when I was young. They collaborated on a few different projects for the homeless and for the troubled youth, among other things. So my grandfather was a member of the church? I wouldn't say that, no. He was a friend of the church, but he wasn't a religious man. He believed only in philanthropy. That being said, Joseph was the person who convinced me to become a priest. Really? Oh yes, I was a teenager back then, full of rebellion, every fiber of my being wanting to distance myself from my father. Joseph made me realize my sinful pride and showed me how I should follow my heart regardless of what others might think. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Do you know anything about an art theft at the Wade Estate in the 80s? I have just a vague memory of reading about it in the paper. That's all I need for now, Father. May the Lord shine his light on you.